Hello, my friends. Sifu J, Artist of Truth. Out here in the studio. Hanging out with you, even through on the old beanie. My favorite studio out here. It's been a while since I've done one of these videos. I believe the last time I did a video like this was the day after my father's funeral. It was a different time. I, I get lots of requests to do these videos. And I haven't done one in a while. I've had a lot of things going on in life. I've posted some of it online. I usually keep all of my stuff private. But sometimes when people go after you and start to say things about you, there's only a certain amount of time that I can allow that to go on without responding. So I've posted some things. But that's not what this video is about. I'm hoping that the wind will be kind to me. The sun is burning into my retinas at the moment. <laughs> Many eyes go through the meadow, but few see the flowers in it. Little Ralph Waldo Emerson there for you. And that is the, the message today. How often do we pass through life and not notice the beautiful things? Worried about tomorrow, thinking about our circumstances, not noticing the, the magic of the moment. Everybody's heard the question, what would you do if you knew you would die? If you knew you would die tomorrow, if you knew you would die a week from now, what would you do in life? Most people say, I wouldn't go to work. I would go climb mountains. I would skydive. I would go to concerts. Or all, it just, you know, fill in the blank. I would do all of those things. And yet if that's the things, or if those are the things that you would do, then you should do them now. You should find a way to do the things in life that matter most while you still have a life to do them. When circumstances are tough, it's hard sometimes to see our way out. We go about our business scurrying along from work, back and forth here and there. We all have to pay bills, I understand. Someone, if someone wants to be a painter, you know, I, I would paint if I could, I'd be an artist. But I gotta make money, so I'm gonna bag these groceries until I can afford my my studio then I'll move on to being an artist and then you find yourself working the next job going to send I'm just using this as a platform next as soon as I get the money so on and so forth and we do that even I've done it but I have mostly done the things that I wanted to do in life and I'm not special in any way any different than any of you I mean we're all special some of us a little more special than others I suppose and Depends on the way you're using the term. All jokes aside, though, we're all basically the same. We want the same things in life, but what makes us unique and different is the way we think, our minds. I've been able to travel. I've played music all of my adult life, taught martial art, taught in school and college, studied philosophy, meditated in caves, done all these crazy things. My point to that is, it, it wasn't because I definitely had a better life where I had everything handed to me. I grew up in, in hard times. Sometimes we had things, sometimes we didn't. So, every circumstance, the most important thing within it is our response to it, how we feel about it, what we think in our minds. We can be happy now if we spend a little time thinking about what is happiness. I'm not sure what it is, but I know when I feel it. Although we're sad at moments, sometimes we're happier, that feeling, that emotion in that moment. It's possible to go through sadness, to go through pain and injury and death and all of those things and still be happy. In the moment, you feel the sadness of the loss or the pain from the broken bone or the injury. But happiness isn't some place that we, we arrive at or which we, we find ourselves one day. I've had teachers say to me, where will you go to be happy? At what point will you get there when you can do the things that you want? Happiness is now. Nirvana, heaven, bliss, whatever you want to call it, is happening right now. And yet we don't 
see it that way because we're messing it up. So we have to change our minds in order to see the flowers. As I talk to you now, my father's grave is just right over here, beneath a tree that all of my life I remember him saying, when I die, I will be buried beneath that tree. The last time I made a video standing here like this, he was in his house, just a little ways off. I'm fairly certain the last time I did a video it was that way. I have been hit in the head a few times. But I get the request to do these videos, and sometimes the request for the subject. How do we change? So I started by saying that, that quote from Emerson about many eyes go through the meadow, but few see the flowers in it, is very relevant to life. Sun being kind to me, moving down a little bit now as the earth rotates, for those of you that don't believe the earth is flat. Our minds are so captured by worry and fear for things that oftentimes never come. It's the things that we never see that, that get us. And as we're in a moment worrying about how good is the moment, if I love someone, do they love me enough? When you're there with them, you're taking your pictures and all, and how long is this moment going to last? I believe that that's the essence of that statement. We're, in that moment, we're missing the flowers. We're so worried about how good is it, or is it going to last long enough, as I just said? Or what's going to happen in the next moment? Can we make this a little bit better instead of just being there and enjoying your life? doing it right then, being totally immersed in it, then there's the flowers. You notice them. When your child runs up and says, Daddy, look at this, and you're like, in a minute, in a minute, I'm doing something. And then one day that child is off somewhere with their own child. And that moment is gone. I'm saying that to not make you sad, to make you realize the, the preciousness of everything is happening as you experience it right now, not at some point in the future. Even though we had moments in the past that we can recall as being happy and fruitful, they're not there anymore. They only, there's this one long scene in a movie, and we're in it. The only proof we have of the past is in our mind. Our memories are the only proof that they ever existed. Right? So how do we see the flowers? What do we do? I'm not sure. <laughs> I have methods. I have practices that I do. But I'm not a savior in any way. There, I, I wish that I could snap my fingers and make everything better. Because if I could, my life would be different. But then I would probably wreck everything by constantly just changing things. We know about the good because of all the pain and all the bad that we feel. We appreciate so much the sunlight because we understand what darkness is. That doesn't have to be some spiritual woo-woo mumble-jumble. It really is that. But the only reason we know good is because of bad. There's the, we have to have this way to relate to it. Otherwise, there is no good or bad. There is no light or darkness. I believe you're with me. I believe you understand. If we can change our mind, we can change the world around us. Not magically like this the magic of it is in that process of doing of existing of experiencing my friends my students followers online i stand here at a time when last year everyone just knew that i wouldn't be here now i hear people say well it's easy for you you're the Sifu, you do all this stuff, if, and I could be happy too, or I could make these videos and all. That's the people that aren't criticizing me constantly. I mean, I have a lot of love and support, but I get a lot of criticism when you put yourself out there publicly. When you, I've done a lot of things in life. When you're teaching and you're reaching people and all, if someone sees you smiling, oh, look at him, he's thinking, drive by, look at him, he thinks he's better than us. I, I, I get attacked. The trolls come out, the wolves do. Especially circumstances that have been in my life now for a little while get blasted 
but yet I'm still going, I'm still flowing. That whole, it's easy because for you, your life is great. You've already done all this stuff. You can just meditate. You can just do that because you play music. You don't have to go into work and all, but that's not the case. When I was born, all these flying sidekicks and all the things that people have seen me doing on here as I teach and do martial arts and used to compete, play music on stage, sing, all these things. When I was born, I had to wear those Forrest Gump braces. My, my feet were a little busted. So I had to wear these braces on my legs. I don't think I've ever said this publicly. In, in order to help my bones grow right, to, to shake my legs, so I wouldn't have bow legs and feet like this. When I was in the third grade, I was complaining with my knees hurting me so bad. We were on the, the way to see, on the way up to Kentucky, to my, my native family. Going up there to see my great grandmother. And I was crying and complaining. My father said, when we get back, I'm taking you to the doctor. We go to the doctor, have these tests done, have arthritis so bad in my legs and in my knees. And he said, it'll be de debilitating by the time he's a teenager. Crippling. Yet here I am. When I was 18 or so, fell three stories, had a brain injury, broke my both legs at the same time. My heel broke it completely off, busted my elbow shattered my teeth I was bleeding out of my eyes same thing might as well give up that martial art you definitely don't want to get hit in your head again yet here I am I was laid in the hospital for a while rolled around in a wheelchair for a long time got where I could walk with crutches finally then I had to walk with a cane then I had to have surgery on my foot again to remove the pins out of my heel back to it Right back to the crutches. But I recovered because I believed in myself. The doctors, obviously, I didn't magically just with some, some mangled up legs go back to the house and go, I'm just going to sit around and have faith. No, the, the beauty of life is that there, there are all these other people with these skill sets and these beliefs and they, they hooked me up. And yet even though I was told that I should give up these things, I kept going, I kept training, recovered, went back to it. Fell through some, <laughs> fell out of a tree about four stories and fell through the roof of a barn that's right over there and got a severe brain injury. Had to be on this medicine to help fix my synapses, I believe, in my brain or whatever they are. I'm not a neuroscientist, so I'm not sure. All of that stuff, same thing. Don't get it in your head again. You should give up the martial art. 2010, I broke my leg again. Both major bones below the knee, tibia and the fibula. Never be able to kick right again. You won't be able to run for a long time if you ever run again. And yet here I am. I could go on like that forever. My point is that no matter what people say, no matter what happens in your life, if it seems like it's not easy, it's not easy. Especially the people that perceive of me that way. I just mean to say that my life hasn't been easy. I've suffered so greatly and people have died around me and I've been in terrible car accidents and motorcycle accidents and I've been stabbed and cut and all these other things have happened in life. I've lost people and I've had relationship problems the same as everyone else. And you see me on here sp smiling, someone just told me just a few days ago, if I didn't know anything about your life, it looks like your life is just all roses and sunshine. <laughs> but how else should it look? Because in my mind it is all roses and sunshine. I'm sad some days, I miss my children, I miss my father. I miss moments, but you can't be attached to them because life is flowing and moving. Just as there were no leaves out here just a few months back, actually just a few weeks back, all the rain came and now green everywhere, flowers blooming in the meadow and my eyes see them. Everything changes, everything flows. We have to do the things that matter. We have to have total belief and faith in ourselves and give up this anxiety about what's going to come. None of those things that happened to me, none of them, I didn't see any of them coming. As I was worried about other things, what am I gonna, how am I gonna pay the bills and what happens, uh, what if I lose my car, bam, I break my leg or, or I get in a car accident. The thing that I didn't see was there. So why worry? We're all going to die. So instead of worrying about death,
focus on living. Live as much as you can with your eyes open in the moment. Doesn't mean abandon everything. Ah, oh, Sifu J, Artist of Truth said, just live in the moment. Just go on, going crazy. Go out on a night in Vegas and just lay it all out. I'm saying take control of your life, take it back from the clutches of excuse, and circumstance. I said some things to my father, and he knew me well. While he's laying there in a situation knowing that death is coming, with the circumstances that I had going on in my own life, being betrayed by someone, all the terrible things that have been done, I started to do something that I don't normally do. The weight of everything was starting to get overwhelming, or I felt like it was, and I said to him, I don't know if I should say it on here, but I said something about my life that I would never come again. And it was just something that I would never say. And he looked at me kind of in shock to hear me say it. Disappointed looking, actually. I basically said that I knew I was just going to be alone forever. That part of my life was behind me. I was content with it. He looked at me. And just, so I know you, son. And he said a couple of other things that I won't go into, but basically to say a little bit of a verbal smack, you know. Are you still who you are? Stop thinking that way. I've never heard you talk like that. You can do anything you want to do in life. Don't wait like I did. That kind of stuff. My eyes snapped right open right in that moment. Here's a man laying in there facing death, literally. He just grinned at me. <laughs> One thing I know about you, son, is you won't be alone. And a few other things. Sorry, I got all amped up for a second. We have to do the things that we want. That's what I'm saying. So if we don't know that we're missing the flowers, how do we suddenly... Realize that we want to see them. That's a good question. We just have to be aware as we pass through the meadow of life that there is beauty everywhere. No matter how, how hard circumstances are, what I would do sometimes for myself is remember that I remember when I was going through these other terrible things and then suddenly I wasn't. And as this situation or circumstance falls upon you or upon me in that instance, I knew because I had been there before. So in that way, I was using the past as a reference for the present moment or the future that I would soon be out of it. If I did the right things and I repeated them. If I was willing to go through the rapids and be banged around a little bit until I could get to calm water. And we can all do that. The philosophy just flows out crazy sometimes. I may not post this. I say that a lot. I've had requests for the video, so I want to get it there. The request was actually, and you make a video about how we live in the moment. You say it all the time. How can we be happy under circumstances that are bad? I've talked about it a lot, but I, I'm not sure. I'm not enlightened, whatever that is. I've had glimpses of it. My teachers have... I think I've met teachers that that I thought was enlightened, but they would quickly deny it. Because it's a passing moment like anything else. It's an emotion. It's that breath where you just, everything's going to be all right. It's that feeling, and it may come for just a half a breath, and then it's gone again. But we know it's there. And it gives us hope that there's something more to life without adding anything. Life just as it is. Someone was kind enough to let me borrow a camera to record this. Someone very precious to me. Someone who definitely came in just as my father said. Gave me the inspiration to move on. Wherever you are in life, I hope you're safe and happy. I hope my rambling, crazy, philosophical messages get through to the people that ask for it. 
Hope that love and happiness follows you everywhere and every day, regardless of what happens to me, even if I can never achieve it myself. I hope that something that I say or do helps you to change your life for the better. Let's do something together to change the world, let's change our minds. As always, love everyone. Talk with you soon.